This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to create a vintage Laura Ashley dress. I was lucky enough to find this beautiful vintage Laura Ashley pattern. It's by McCall's and it's pattern 4319. It's the most beautiful 80s formal dress. It is just so incredible. I couldn't believe my luck when I picked this one up. And I'm just so excited to give this pattern a try and make a really beautiful dress for my wardrobe. The fabric I'm going to be making this dress out of is this amazing Seersucker gingham fabric. I actually salvaged this fabric from secondhand bedding and I just think this kind of plain and simple fabric combined with this really formal dramatic 80s dress is just going to be the best combo. I have a good picture of what it looks like in my head and hopefully it will translate and actually make a really beautiful dress for my wardrobe. The pattern itself has two dress options. It's got the long sleeves and the short sleeves. For my dress today, I'm going to make the long sleeve version. The only thing I think I might change up about this dress because I just love the style so much is I might actually bring the waistline up slightly. And the other thing I think I might change is the neckline. I feel like the kind of princess shaped V-neck might just be a little bit dated so instead i think i'm gonna make just a square neckline and the size of this pattern is a size 14 so according to the back that is pretty much exactly my size the hips are spot on the waist is slightly bigger and really the only thing i need to change is the bust and make that a little bit smaller so yeah let's get started Oh my goodness, vintage patterns never have pockets. I'm so excited. So some slight bad news, the pattern no longer has the bodice pieces in it. I guess that's what happens when you buy secondhand patterns. There's always a risk that they may not have all the pieces still in the envelope. I'm pretty confident I could draft up my own version of the bodice. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Obviously quite disappointed I don't have the full pattern, but I think we can make do and I will have a go at drafting a bodice to suit this dress. And that way I know it's going to fit me properly as well. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna get on with now. On further inspection of the pattern, I realized the bodice is made up of these four pieces, which once sewn together, make the bodice and give it some shape. Before getting in and drafting my own bodice, I thought I would quickly check if I had anything suitable in my pattern stash and managed to find this new look 6723 pattern, which has almost an identical bodice to the Laura Ashley pattern. So to save time, I'm going to be using this new look pattern for the bodice instead. So I traced the bodice template pieces out in my size and then press the Laura Ashley pattern pieces with the lowest setting on my iron to help remove the creases from being folded for the last few decades. Removing these creases will make it a lot easier to cut the pattern pieces out and make the cutting a lot more accurate as well. So I now have all the pieces I need to make this dress. As you can see, I've just drafted a bodice that kind of looks like the pictures in the instructions from the new look dress and hopefully it will work out perfectly fine. So yeah, let's get to cutting out all of these pieces out of that lovely seersucker gingham fabric.
Okay, so it's day two of making my dream Laura Ashley dress and I'm so excited to get started on actually making the dress today. I'm going to attempt to try and make it all in one day. I'm not sure if it's possible or not, but I can't imagine it's going to be a very complicated or long make. But yeah, it's like about 9.30 in the morning right now. So I've got a whole day ahead of me of sewing and I'm just really looking forward to it. So let's have a bit of a read of the instructions and fingers crossed, I do actually have all of the instruction pages. Before getting started on making this dress, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been watching my videos for a while, then I'm sure you know all about Squarespace by now, but just in case you don't, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and run your business. Whether you'd like to start making and selling your own products, run a blog, or simply create a portfolio, Squarespace have so many different templates to choose from, you're sure to be able to find one that's perfect for you and your needs. Once you've selected your template, you're then able to customize it completely to suit your brand and style. And when I was starting my own Squarespace website back in 2016, it literally only took me a few hours to create my dream website as Squarespace makes it so easy to customize and add everything you need with just a few clicks, no knowledge or background in coding needed whatsoever. If you'd like to check out Squarespace for yourself, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, head to squarespace.com slash rosaryapparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Well, all the instructions seem to be there, so that's a relief. Um, and we're going to start with the bodice first. I'm obviously doing my bodice with a square neckline, so I'm not going to include the facings, but instead just line the bodice um, to enclose all the seams on the inside. Um, so I think I will have a go at making my bodice first and hopefully it will still make the whole dress making process work. Um, we're just gonna have to wait and see, but let's get on with the bodice. So to make the bodice, I pin and stitch the bodice sides to the bodice front and back. Okay, so this is the front bodice and as you can see, I need to kind of like trim away the side bodice a little bit just because, um, where's a good example? Just like it kind of shows here, it should curve up a little bit and because I used the new look pattern, the piece was obviously straight and I really do want that defined, I think it's called a basque waist or a princess style waist as I like to call it. Um, so that's what I'll do now. I'll try to trim them as evenly as possible for both the main fabric and the lining. I ended up just making the lining out of the same fabric as the main um, because I had so much of it and I didn't really have any fabric that matched well enough to be a good lining. I then clipped the curved seams of the bodice front and back to help them curve smoothly, being super careful not to accidentally snip the stitching. Then I pressed the seams open. Next, with right sides together, I placed the bodice backs onto the bodice fronts and stitched them together along the shoulder and side seams. And the bodice is starting to look a little something like this. Okay, so the bodice is coming together very nicely. It's looking pretty good. 
um, but I've just realized I have to trim the back bodice to match the alteration I did to the front bodice um, uh, so yeah I'm just gonna take just that two centimeters or so off the bottom edge of the bodice Okay, so this is the skirt front piece and the instructions say to stitch about a centimetre and a half from this raw edge at this point to help reinforce that like point at the waist um, on the front of the dress. So that is what I'm going to do and then it's time to put the whole skirt together. Once the reinforcement stitching was done, the instructions said to clip towards the stitching at the front point to really help define that point at the waist. Then with right sides together, I pinned the skirt front sides to the skirt front. Next, I attach the pockets to the side edges of the skirt front and each skirt back. Then I pin the skirt backs to the skirt front, matching the pockets together. and then stitch the skirts together, making sure to stitch around the pockets. As you can see here, there is a lot of fabric in this dress's skirt. This skirt is going to be so intense. It is massive. I've never worked with this much fabric to create a skirt of a dress before, so it's gonna be Whew, yeah, pretty dramatic, I think. Um, I'm excited to see how it looks. It hopefully won't be too big, so big that I'll feel like I'm wearing a costume, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. Now to gather up all of this fabric. Oh, wish me luck. The instructions said to stitch the gathering stitches in sections to kind of match up where the skirt will sit once it's attached to the bodice. I hadn't gathered a skirt like this before and even though it did take a bit more time and effort and it was pretty tricky to keep all of the loose threads under control, but I actually found it ended up being a lot easier to keep the gathering even when attaching the skirt to the bodice. It also really helped to create that definite point at the waist front. I then stitched the skirt to the bodice and then gave the gathers a good press with my iron. Oh my goodness, this is what it's looking like currently. I am obsessed. I love it so, so much. Um, I'm really happy with the positioning of the waist. Like, it's definitely above my waist, which is exactly what I wanted. And the skirt, I don't think is too over the top. Like it is definitely huge, but I absolutely love it. I just think it is the most beautiful looking dress. And I really do love the combination of just the plain gingham with this beautiful formal style dress. I think it works really nicely. And so far I'm loving it. I actually kind of love it sleeveless. So I will put the lining in and try it on without the sleeves again um, because
because I don't know, long sleeves might just be maybe a little bit too much. I might end up just doing either short sleeves or leaving the sleeves out altogether. Um, yeah, loving it. So now I need to pin the lining onto the dress. Um, I haven't actually made a dress like this before where the dress is pretty much completely finished. It just needs the lining to be added onto it. Um, so hopefully the instructions are clear on how to go about doing that because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> The lining is pinned in along the neck edge um, so now I can just stitch that together and then flip it around and then the neck edge should be nicely enclosed on the inside. So I still need to hand stitch the lining onto the inside and I still need to add the sleeves um, but I just had to try it on and see how it's looking. I have to say I'm so happy that I opted for the square neckline. I just think it suits this style of dress so much. I still am so surprised that I'm considering going sleeveless. I just think it looks really cool just the way it is with um, a little top underneath. And in terms of sizing. I'm really surprised that the bodice is miles too big for me. I made the smallest um, bodice size, which ended up being a size smaller than I should have gone according to the measurements. Um, and it's still miles too big. So I'm gonna have to take it in at the sides a little bit as well. But yeah, I am so, so happy with how it's looking. I don't think I'll get it done today because it's already getting late in the day and it's been a massive day of sewing. Um, but yeah, here's a little update. I think I'll just spend the rest of the afternoon adjusting the fit a little bit in the waist and I will also hand stitch the lining onto the inside. Um, but yeah, then I have to decide what sort of sleeve I'm gonna do. days later now as I wanted to take a couple of days to really consider whether or not I want to add sleeves to this dress. I'm just so torn about it. I really like the dress as it is without the sleeves but then I also really want to um, stay true to the original Laura Ashley pattern and put the sleeves in and then when I shared a few little sneak peeks on Instagram a lot of you said that I should leave it and just keep it as like a pinafore style dress which made me even more torn. But with all that said, I think I will add the sleeves to this dress. Like I said, I at least want to make this dress as 
close to the original Laura Ashley pattern as I can. I've already changed the neckline and adjusted where the waistline sits, so I think that's enough changes for this one. But I will definitely be making another version of this dress without sleeves in the future for sure. Also, the way I've done the bodice means that I can no longer like have a really seamless seam around the sleeves so I would have to use bias binding or something which will kind of ruin the construction of this dress a little bit as well um, because at the moment this is the most beautifully constructed dress pattern I've ever used. Um, let me show you what I mean. So I've really taken the time to hand stitch the lining onto the inside to give the inside of the dress an almost seamless look. I'm so so proud of it. It just looks so professional and so beautiful on the inside. And then obviously the neckline has this really beautiful crisp finish as well. Um, and I think if I just put bias binding around the sleeves, it will really let down the beautiful construction of this dress. But I do know how I can get away with not using bias binding if I was to make this dress again. So yeah, now I'm going to get on with making up these sleeves. So to make the sleeves, I start by sewing two rows of gathering stitches along the top raw edge and then fold the sleeves in half with right sides together and stitch them together along the underarm edge. I then gently pull on the gathering stitches to gather up the fabric as this will help ease the sleeves into the armholes and will also give the tops of the sleeves a nice amount of puffiness. Then I pin the sleeves to the bodice with right sides together and then stitch them in place. The sleeves are in. They're looking really great. I'm so glad I decided to add them. Now, apparently I need to add these kind of makeshift shoulder pads just to like create a bit of extra puffiness in the sleeve. Because of this fabric though, the sleeves already seem quite puffy to me. So I'm gonna quickly try it on, see how they look and decide whether or not I need to add these. So here's a little look at the dress so far. Um, gotta say, I probably preferred it without the sleeves. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is like, make them a little bit skinnier and definitely crop them a little bit. It's just a little too princess vibes at the moment, which is exactly what the pattern is meant to be. Um, I just think I will probably wear it more if the sleeves are a little bit shorter on me and as for the puffiness i think there's already enough body in them so i don't think i'll include those little fabric shoulder pads so yeah what i'm gonna do now is fix up these sleeves slightly and then it will be time to hem the bottom of the skirt to fix up the sleeves i decided to shorten them by a good three centimeters or a little over an inch and I also removed some of the excess fabric in the sleeve to slim them down a little bit, making sure they were still able to fit over my wrist. I then hemmed the entire bottom edge of the skirt. Ideally, it would have been nice to hand stitch the hem in place, but there was just way too much fabric for that. And I'm pretty sure it would have taken me weeks to do. So a machine stitched hem it is. Okay, I love it so much more now that the sleeves have been shortened and taken in a little bit. I just think it suits the style of dress so much better and just makes the puffiness of the sleeve look a lot cuter as well. And I've hemmed the skirt as well. It is a massive skirt. Um, and I just love how this dress looks with my Doc Martin boots. I just think the combination of a really feminine and quite formal princess style dress with a pair of like chunky military style boots just looks so nice. But yeah, I'm just so, so happy with this dress and I can't wait to see all the different ways I'll end up styling it as well because it is such an unusual dress and completely different to anything I've got in my wardrobe. It's going to be a really fun piece to 
yeah, kind of figure out how I will go about wearing it day to day. So I'll insert some footage now of me wearing this dress so you can get a really good look at how it looks on. So I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing the whole making process of making this amazing Laura Ashley vintage dress pattern. I've just enjoyed the whole making process of this dress so much. It was quite a challenge, especially because I had to end up merging two different patterns together, but I'm so, so happy with the results. And I hope that this video inspires you to have a go at working with some vintage sewing patterns. If you enjoyed this video, then I actually have filmed another video just like this one where I make a dress from a vintage pattern. So I'll leave a link to that video below if you haven't already seen it, um, as that might be something you'd like to check out. And if you haven't done so already, then be sure to come find me on Instagram at Rosary Apparel if you'd like to see some of the behind the scenes of making these videos. And subscribe to this channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.